This morning I'd like to read from my text the last verse of our scripture reading, Psalm 34, verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Did you have any good food over Thanksgiving? Have you ever had someone tell you, just try it, you'll like it. I know myself when I was uh, young, I guess I didn't have a very broad spectrum of different foods, it was fairly limited, and when I would be offered something that looked unusual or different or whatever, didn't look appealing, I, I wouldn't try it. That's just kind of the way I was. I remember as a teenager, starting to, you know, go out with other people besides my mom and dad, and some took me to a Chinese restaurant. Well, I'd never had Chinese food before. It didn't sound good. I don't even know if I knew what it looked like, but I got a burger. It's like, I'm, I'm not trying no Chinese food. Well, later on in life, I did try Chinese food, and it's very good. Might not be good for you, but it's very good. My wife addresses this often with our two youngest grandkids. Just try it. You'll like it. And many times, you know, no way. Or, that's yucky. Sometimes, though, my wife gets it, just try one bite. And then kind of a smile comes on. Oh, that's good. Well, in our text it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Have you tasted and seen that the Lord is good? If you have, you know what I'm talking about. It's not just good, it's very good. Well, here we are. Thanksgiving Day is past. But that isn't a reason not to be thankful. The first part of the scripture says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my, my mouth. So Thanksgiving isn't just for one day a year here in the United States, but it should be a part of our everyday life as Christians. Especially since we have tasted and seen that the Lord is so good and how blessed we are to follow him. Christmas preparation is in full swing as you see around the valley. If you went shopping at all, if you brave that, you know that uh, they're very geared up for Christmas. They would like to sell you as much as possible, and they have everything they can to try to entice you to buy something. Christmas has a reputation of you need to buy gifts for people, so they capitalize on that, and they've done a very good job of that. Christmas music is being played. Christmas decorations have gone up, like here in the church. Maybe they've gone up or are going up at your house. But that first Christmas, that was God showing his goodness and his love to humanity. From the very beginning, back in Genesis, the first chapter, God was good. And it tells us in verse 31 of chapter 1 of Genesis that God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So from day 1 to day 6, the completion of the creation Everything that God created was good. 
Not just good, very good. Yeah. Exceptional. Well, evil didn't show up till chapter 3 when the devil in the form of the serpent beguiled, tricked Eve into uh, disobeying God. And how he out there in the midst of the garden one day and Eve was out there and Adam must not have been too far away. He says, look at this tree. Isn't that a beautiful tree? Look at that fruit. Looks good, doesn't it? I wonder if he used the phrase, try it, you'll like it. Well, it tells us that after all, he says, well, first of all, the woman replied, said, no, God said we're not supposed to eat of that tree. So she knew what she was supposed to do and what she wasn't supposed to do. <coughs> but this is where the old devil, with his tactics, and he's still using the same today, tried to say, well, God really doesn't mean what he says, or it won't really be that bad. After all, I mean, doesn't it look good? And after all, here in chapter 3, it says, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know in the day ye eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. All they knew was good. God is good. Everything about God is good. There's not a single evil part in God. Only God is good. So the devil uh, sells Eve something that she doesn't even know. She just, it appeals to her intellect. I'll be like God. I'll be something more superior than I am. I'll be something that's appealing. She didn't know what evil was. Well, that's history, isn't it? She gave to her husband Adam. They ate. They disobeyed God. And they found out real quick what evil was. Sin entered the world. All of a sudden, they realized that they were, they were naked. They hid from God before they would commune with God. They'd walk with God in the cool of the day. They had a, a relationship with God. Now they were afraid of God. They were kicked out of the beautiful garden. But God had a plan because God is good. Man had a, a debt that he could never pay. You can't do enough good deeds, be good enough in your own strength, a good moral person. No man can ever achieve a right relationship with God if it wasn't for God's goodness and for his love. And he had a plan that he would send his son to be a remedy for that sin. That he would give his life on a rugged cross to shed his blood, to pay that penalty so that we could have a relationship with God. And Revelation 13 verse 8 says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, speaking of the Antichrist, whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. God had a plan from the very beginning that he would extend his goodness and love to humanity through his son, Jesus. As we know that came about after the prophets had prophesied at, uh, for many years when the angel appeared to Joseph in a dream regarding Mary. And in Matthew 121 it says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which is spoken by the prophet, by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and shall call 
his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God in his love and his goodness devised the plan or had the plan where he would send his son to be born as a baby. To grow up and go through all the different stages of life. So he could relate to us humans. He could have just sent his son to, to conquer the world or, or something. But no, he, he, the plan was that Jesus would come as a baby. Born of a virgin. An impossibility. That's where God specializes is in impossibilities. And the plan was started there that first Christmas when Jesus was born. A humble birth, no room in the inn, born in a stable, placed in a manger. We show all the way through uh, the humility of Jesus and how he allowed himself, co-creator, to come as one of the least. And we see all the way through his life how he chose to be the underdog. It says they despised him. Yet all he did was go about doing good. Expressing God's goodness. Showing people God's love. Peter speaking in Acts, the 10th chapter, verse 38 through 40. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Well, you remember when Jesus was on the cross there? It says it is finished. And then he gave up the ghost. God's plan was finished. The price had now been paid. And that third day when he raised triumphant over death, hell, and the grave, now we have a hope if we have partaken of God's mercy and his grace, uh, that gift that he has offered to have that relationship, a right relationship with God, now we have the hope that one day we will either rise from the dead if we die first or we will be caught up together with the Lord in the air when he returns. Jesus, during his ministry, gave the example which is so relevant, I believe, today in John 10.10, 10, speaking of the shepherd and the sheepfold, and how the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come to give life, and not just life, but life more abundantly. What a contrast. We see before our very eyes firsthand. the battle that's going on between good and evil in our world. It has accelerated in the last three years, in my 60 years on this earth. I have never seen anything like it in my whole life. You probably haven't either. And it seems to be accelerating uh, each and every day. The things we hear, the things we see, I, I can't even comprehend it. How is this possible? 
It's possible because Satan is at work and his whole agenda is being exposed of what he wants to steal, to kill, to destroy people's lives. And unfortunately, he's doing a good job of it. We see all the evil, the corruption, the hate, the chaos, the death. I guess we shouldn't be alarmed because in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says, verse 1, it says this, Know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. It gives a list of different things that will transpire, and one of them is there will be despisers of those that are good. Being on this side of the fence, it's hard to believe why somebody wouldn't want good. Why would you want bad? Why would you want evil? I mean, we see it. It's horrible. How could anybody want it? Yet we know there's whole, a whole segment of this world that hates good. Because good has to do with God. Because God is good. All the time God is good. And they hate God, so they want nothing to do with it. So they hate anybody that believes in God, that wants to follow God. They hate that. I'm thankful that God still wants to do us good. He's still in the saving business. He still wants to change lives. He still wants to uh, make uh, new creatures in Christ Jesus. He wants to make old things pass away and behold, all things become new. He wants to make a change in people's lives. And we're thankful even here we've heard uh, some of your testimonies where God has made a radical change in your life. We've seen with our own eyes, we've heard individuals of how they were, how they were not serving God, but when they repented of their sins, uh, prayed that honest prayer, a radical change was made. Now they want to do good. Now we want to follow God. Now we want to do what God says. I think of the commandments and the instructions in God's word. And every single one of them is for our benefit, for our good. God doesn't take anything good out of our lives. The old enemies, he tries to put reasons why people shouldn't serve God. Some think it's just a bunch of rules and things you have to follow. Oh, you won't have any fun. You can't do your own thing anymore. Whatever the excuse may be. But you have to remember that the devil is a liar and the father of it. And we see uh, the people that have been deceived and the, how their lives have been ruined. But thank the Lord, if they haven't, uh, or if they're still alive, there's still hope. If they will just surrender to Jesus, just pray that simple, honest prayer. God wants to save their never-dying soul. He wants to do us good. Jesus is still saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I want to give you rest for your soul. I want to make you happy. I want to give you something to live for. You know, the benefits, there's no way to even express them all. It says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. I'm thankful for that night of September the 12th, 1976, when I surrendered to Jesus. I surrendered all. 
and he made a change. From the outside, you might say, I was just a good little church kid. Well, I knew I was a sinner. And it, God's witness to me, a heavy load, I felt like a heavy load was lifted off my shoulders. I'd heard it my whole life. I knew I wanted to make heaven. I knew Jesus was coming back. I was scared to death that he would come and I wouldn't be ready, but I wouldn't do anything about it. But I'm thankful for that Sunday night, Grant's Pass Oregon, when I prayed that honest prayer, he came down and met me. I tried it. I like it. And I recommend it. 47 years I've tried it. Is that long enough to see if something works? What else do you have that's 47, year old, 47 years old and it still works real good? There's nothing like the gospel in what it does. Verse 4 of Psalm 34 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from some of my fears. No, from all my fears. Verse 6 says, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard me and saved me out of some of my troubles. No, all of my troubles. Can you see why I can recommend, taste and see that the Lord is good? Because I've proved it. Psalm 107, verses 8 and 9, it says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men, for he satisfieth the longing soul and he filleth the hungry soul with goodness. In closing here, I'd like to read the lyrics of the song, Only Jesus Can Satisfy Your Soul. The world will try to satisfy that longing in your soul. You may search the wide world or, but you'll be just as before. You'll never find true satisfaction until you've found the Lord, for only Jesus can satisfy your soul. If you could have fame and fortune, all the wealth you could obtain, yet you have not Christ within, your living here would be in vain. There come a time when death shall call you. Riches cannot help you then. So some, so come to Jesus, for he can satisfy. The chorus says, for only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Only he can make a change your heart and make you whole. He gave you peace you never knew. Sweet love and joy in heaven too. For only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Have you tasted? Have you seen? Have you proved it? Well, we have a wonderful opportunity. If you haven't, you can. Try it. I guarantee you'll like it. And it's very easy. It's just bowing before God and saying, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I want to serve you. And he makes that change. You know, it says he's more willing to give than we are even to receive. Mm -hmm. He wants to do us good. Today, he wants to do us good. May God help us. And if you've tasted and seen and you've proved it like I have, may God help us to come before him and thank him. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for each and every day, every day for the hope that we have of Jesus' return and everlasting life. We have everything to look forward to if we have Jesus in our heart. The song is 657. I invite you to come and pray.